CES coverage sponsored by GoDaddy.com, the leader in domain names, web hosting services, new customers save 25% by using promo code CES25 at GoDaddy.com. CES coverage sponsored by Audible.com, where books come alive. Listen to a bestseller on your iPod or MP3 player. You can get a free trial over at audiblepodcast.com forward slash CES. CES coverage sponsored by Lexar Las Vegas. Get to the point. Rooms start at $40. See tpn.tv for Lexar advertisement, which is the gateway to savings. Got her on board in there. Hello. Hello. So, How are you? Good morning, Jeannie. How are you? Are, I'm, I'm very well, thank you. It's early. How are you surviving on day four of the show? I am ready to leave Vegas for a while, <laughs> but I'm doing just fine, thanks. Yeah, we've been here since Sunday and set up the, the studio on Monday and Tuesday, and uh-huh. we're ready to leave Vegas, yes, too. Yes, absolutely. So, so you are with Zinio, and mm-hmm. we're going to talk, I guess, about digital newsstand. Absolutely. Why don't you give me some background first, just a little bit about Zinio, so everyone knows what that is, what sure. the company is, and then we'll talk about digital newsstand. Sure. So... Zinio is the world's largest digital publishing company. We've been around for 10 years, and in the course of 10 years, we brought on over 3,500 consumer magazines from all around the world with a website that enables you to access, buy, read, and download content. So you can do it, read it whether you're online or offline on almost any device right. from any location. I think now, you know, it's, I'll be honest with you, it's been probably... I think I get one print magazine still delivered to my home, uh-huh. and I think everything else I'd either do on my iPad or do on my computer. Um, my family's very digital. I know yeah. not every family is that way, right. but looks like you got a way to get us connected. I'm seeing her on your iPad. Of course, we are not able to see this because it's, it's turned, nice. but yeah. the Rolling Stones yeah. and a variety of different, yeah, we'll put it here. He's got his focus oh. there on the table. Awesome. So tell us then about Newsstand and how that works as integrated, I guess, into all these devices you have here. Yeah, well, so I've got a Samsung Galaxy Tab, I've got an iPad, I've got an iPod Touch, and I've got an HTC Hero with an extra battery, so ah, nice. um, that's why it's, it's, <laughs> it's so big. But I've got all the all of these devices, and you know, Zinio started out 10 years ago looking for a way that consumers who wanted magazines that they couldn't normally get to be able to connect with their content and make right. it very simple. And when the mobile access came out with the iPhone and, and the iPad, last year, it began, it created an explosion of interest, mm-hmm. mainly because it was convenient. Right. I mean, it, it's very convenient to, be, to take out your iPad or to take out your iPhone when you're sitting at a doctor's office or when you're yep. on the train or on the bus and, and really start to read something, especially if you're on an airplane. And we've seen from there that people love it. They love being able to store their magazines and go to their entire library at a whim on whatever device they have yep. and not have to worry about paying for it multiple times like you do with, with many other types of of applications. So we call it Unity. Buy it once, read it anywhere, yep. subscribe, single issue. And one thing too is I'm finding out as I'm going into doctor's office and dentist offices and being on airplanes, they're investing heavily right now in, in magazines, right? Absolutely. I'm being sarcastic here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there's really, you know, you and, and they always have what you want to read. So again, trying to be sarcastic. I don't know if it's coming across, but obviously with this, you have the magazines that you want at your fingertips. Mm-hmm. So how does this work from a uh, subscription standpoint? Do you have to be a normal subscriber? Can you buy one-off issues? How does the how does the plan work with people trying to buy stuff through the newsstand? The answer is yes. So I know when you go to that doctor's office, and you have your iPad, you think you might be disappointed because you can't get that 1998 issue of ESPN that they have waiting for right, you, right? right? But you can. We have the, we have back issues that go back as far as 10 years, subscriptions and single issues, and it's really up to you. We've wow. seen most people are choosing subscriptions to right. make it easier and to get engaged, and, and um, it's a lot of fun. And it's it's On probably a little cheaper, too, if you buy the subscription than a one-off magazine, too, I would think. About 80% cheaper, wow. actually. And wow. what we've seen on the on the iPhone and the smaller devices are people are actually using them to shop. Right. So they'll be reading some content that they love, and you know maybe they're looking to redo their kitchen. They'll literally take El Decor into Home Depot and show the guy at the paint stand and say, I'm trying to paint my kitchen this color. This color. Which is really interesting because it opens up a whole new market right. for the publishers, and it gives you know that access and convenience to the consumers without having to rip all those pages out and save all those magazines. But what I love is all the interactivity that we're doing, and uh, I'll show you uh, National Geographic Traveler on, on their cover for their winter issue. It's pretty phenomenal, and yeah, I'll turn this that's here. That's just fast. 
It, it, it's fast and it's snowing on the cover. Oh, which that is, great. is that is. Yeah, you know, so I, I had a Cheerio in. box in here yesterday that lit up on the front. Yeah, this is cool, <laughs> right? <laughs> that is way cool. That is it cool. Is, it is pretty cool, and um, you know, so that's that's for people who are interested in travel. Now, this is Marie Claire, and this is um, Emma Watson. And this, see, she's, she's moving. moving. Yes. So this is actually something a lot of the sports magazines are going to be adopting. Okay, that's spooky. You know what Emma Watson movies is famous for, uh, and Harry Potter the also had all their mo their their pictures were moving. This yeah. is this just is like just this. eerie. It's crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah it's like the Daily Prophet. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. It's it's phenomenal the things that the things that publishers are doing now to enhance the experience. You know, Sporting News Today. That is that is that is just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, it makes sense. The Daily Prophet is You know, is with here. digital graphics and everything we can do today, you know, I'm sh and I'm sure there's going to be stuff tied to full run movies or, you know, you're going to be able to, all this stuff is, yeah. advertisers are going to be able to link directly to buy a product. Yeah, yeah, no, we, we, and we do that now. I'll actually show you. Your, uh, I was an original consumer with uh, Zinio back uh, in the day. I, I uh, subscribed to Aviation Week for a while and I was able to, Get that on uh, on Zenio on my computer. This is before uh, iPads around, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did have one issue, and but it wasn't necessarily Zenio's fault. I also subscribed back in the day to PC Magazine. Yeah. Uh huh. And but they wouldn't the sub, the subscription on the magazine didn't transfer to Zenio, and I had to buy a separate the subscription for them. We get that question quite often. It's it's really kind of uh, you know an interesting question that we receive from bunch of people is, is how can I just transfer it? And I don't think the publishers were thinking about that early on, but now I think it's, it's become a big concern. Right. But an, another area of the magazines that people love reading digitally, especially since the iPad, is um, the any kind of gossip magazines. Because here, <laughs> if you can actually look at, at the entertainment magazines and see, is Britney Spears, does she really have mm -hmm. a black eye? Or, <laughs> you know, um, does Cameron Diaz really look bad without makeup on? It, it's, pretty, it's pretty addictive. So we have a lot of fun with it, and there's just so much opportunity for growth. We're really looking forward to what the publishers and advertisers do. Macy's puts their catalog inside the magazine, so you can actually shop from it instead of seeing a static page. It's, it's, it's a great deal of fun. You know, I think what this is going to do is this may be the savior for, well, if they're not in digital, if they're not online now, I can't imagine any of the print manufacturers or the, the print, why print when you can go digital? Exactly, right. exactly. Right. The operating cost savings alone is, is pretty that's phenomenal. That's true, too, and, that, and that, that'll help <laughs> help save their industry as well because, you know, obviously there's been a lot of consolidation and shrinkage in the number of magazines that are out there. You know, your big names stay, but the kind of the third-party magazines you don't see a lot, they've struggled. Yeah, yeah. They really have. But I think it's cool, the interactivity that we're going to be able to have. Yes. Uh, too. Uh, watching watching the, the snowfall or the... Uh, or the uh, moving uh, model on the cover. At, um, that's that's very it's, attractive. It's great. Yeah, it's great. So it's it's so much fun. You know, and speaking of the like the color tones and stuff. You know, my my wife uh, was looking through a house and garden, and she says that's the color I want for my kitchen. And she said that's the one. You do. So here's you, you can know, shop with it now. So the she did take it, but she wasn't looking at digitally. She had tore it oh. out of a magazine, mm -hmm. and she took that to Home Depot. And it was very hard to get that color match. Now, what would be really cool is if they gave us the color codes that were in those pictures. Oh, absolutely. And, and told us the paint codes. Yeah, and then you can just walk in with and it. say, here's the paint code I want. Or better yet, link to it and say, order this paint at Home Depot. Right. Yeah. And then, well, that's what Macy's does. And this is Macy's catalog that's in VivMag, which is a magazine for women. But instead of just seeing the static page, you click on it, and it um, gives you the actual catalog that you can shop through here. You can browse, and when you see a product that you like, you just click on it, and you can go out to the website and buy it. Wow. Which is great. Yeah. So we, we love all this innovation, it, and it's, it's so early on. People like Macy's that are early adopters have really benefited from now, how, it. How long have you had moving uh, graphics in there? Because I, I didn't realize Zenio moved went to moving graphics. Oh, gosh, for a long time. Really? Probably, yeah, so on before the iPad, we've had it for about, okay. I would say, at least three years. Outside Magazine, Viv Mag, um, you know, there's National Geographic. There's a, a number, I would say, a good percentage of our titles do something that's interactive. Sporting News Today does something really basic. They take the highlight photos from the best game of the night before, uh -huh. and they put them in their magazine because they figure a lot of people are busy, and mm -hmm. it's a daily sporting news issue, so they want to flip through the photos in the morning just like they flip through their newspaper. Photo galleries have become very, very popular on, on the iPad, but I love... Um, 
and I'll, I'll show it to you on the big screen, Rolling Stone. What Rolling Stone did was they did their greatest 500 songs of all time. And they put it on here so you can actually listen to it as well. So you can flip through, read the greatest 500 <laughs> songs of all time. You can hear preview clip, and you can buy the song. That's cool. And that went crazy. <coughs> it, it, was, uh, it was very, very popular, and um, still is. It still is. So I see, of course, I, I know probably the iPad popularity is huge, but you're also moving. You've got, a, a, I believe that's an Android device. Yeah, and this, is, this is the Samsung Galaxy Tab that just went live, you know, last probably... I think October, November, right. through all of the all of the newsstands. So we are pre-installed on this globally in something called the Reader's Hub. In the U.S., um, it's not pre-installed. The, the Reader's Hub was taken off by a lot of the carriers, but will be available in the Android market very soon. But this is, you know, this is the shopping page for tech magazines. Very similar experience. Yep. It's personal preference. Do you like the seven inch? Do you like the ten inch? You know, what? What? How do you want to read? As long as people buy the device and the apps are there, they don't. You know, it doesn't matter to you. It doesn't matter to us. And yeah. what we love is the ability that. If you bought it, if you bought PC Magazine on your PC back in the day and you get an iPad, you turn it on, it's there. That's right. Your entire history is there for you as well. Same thing with this is the iPod Touch, but in the, and then this is a smaller 4-inch. Um, we're also, you know, on, on the Dell streak. So it's, it's, it's fun. It's really great. Are uh, producers or, or uh, publishers uh, becoming more flexible with allowing their, uh, their paper or old subscriptions to merge with the, the electronic and have by one subscription for either content? Yes, yeah, we're starting to see the bundles now um, where people are, what, we, what we've seen in our research is um, people who buy a pro the subscription digitally are most likely not a prior print consumer. They're a website fan, but right. they didn't necessarily right. subscribe. But about 15% has that crossover. So almost everybody is offering bundles where you can either switch from print to digital or you can buy both. And you can do the two for one. Um, and people, a lot of people that are just trying digital for the first time to be safe will continue to get their print. And so they still look at it as two separate subscriptions, really. For right now, but they're starting to merge it together, which I think we'll see over the next two years okay. become very, very big and You know, and we've subscribed to National Geographic for years. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't, you know, I'm my age. National Geographic's been around a lot longer than yep. I've yeah. been around. Yeah. So when they came out with their digital bundle of all the National Geographic stuff, I I swooped on that oh, right. That box, yeah. yeah, that was a great collection. I, I, you know, swooped on that immediately. But I think what's cool now is that sometimes it is kind of nice when you do have because not everyone is always wanting to use the iPad. So sometimes the print stuff is good for yeah. certain magazines. I think it real it still is a is a good fit and it's. You know, G National Geographic obviously has real super high quality pictures. Yeah, in it and they they do my favorite uh, my favorite piece that they do is your shot, which you might be familiar with. Right. It's in the front of the book. Yep. In print, they can only show two pictures, and in their digital edition, what I love about it is there's no restrictions on the page. Right. So you can actually have more photos than than what you would typically see in print, and they're so high def and gorgeous. It's it's completely crazy, especially when you're looking at it, you know, on an iPad where yep. you can, you can, where you can zoom, zoom in. You can you can view the slideshow here and and really get into everything that they do, and it's just it's just such a phenomenally high uh, high quality experience. So where do you think this goes next? Yeah, obviously this is available today. So wh what what comes next? What are we going to see over the next two years? If you had a crystal ball, and I know you probably talk about this, you probably have a five-year plan, but what do you think is coming yeah. next? Well, we, I mean, we really think that what happened with the launch of the iPad for digital reading was just the tip of the iceberg. And, you know, as we work with the Samsungs and the Dells and all of the other device manufacturers, um, you know, we're on the demo for Windows Live downstairs. It's, it's really, we see this year as new devices coming in market and consumers actually becoming aware of what they can do on all of these devices, reading, playing games, productivity, and getting used to, you know, figuring out how to navigate. Uh, and then we see probably towards the end of this year and into 2012 to be a huge time of transition for content. There's been a lot of controversy on, you know, do digital newsstands actually work? And there's been right. a lot of articles out there suggesting they don't. We've seen, you know, triple digit growth. So I mean, we can tell you firsthand, and all of our publishers can too, that this is something that's just starting to explode. And I think it's really going to be in 2012 when you start to see a lot of the innovation around the way content shows up. Because right now, for a publisher, taking National Geographic as an example, this gorgeous content, they build optimized for 
this 9.6 inch iPad right. screen. Right. To be able to make it look as gorgeous on these smaller screens, on this mid-sized screen, on your PC screen, on your Mac screen, on your TV, is, is quite a feat. It, it requires a lot of forward thinking and a lot of publishers are looking at changing their operational strategy to make it go to market. On our side, we actually are building tools that will come out in the next few months that allow a publisher to give us one file and we optimize right. for screen sizes, for formats, for HD size. Just to make it easier. So content. kind of like you're clearing house and you get to distribute the media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we think it's going to be a lot, of, a lot of fun. Something new probably every month for the next two years at least. So this does not probably bode well for bookstores and stuff that sell magazines. Obviously, I think they're going to be okay for a while because there's not, everyone is not completely going to do digital take up. But I look at what my mom does, and she's a boomer. She's uh, basically, L she's in her 60s. Um, she's embraced digital technology oh, yeah? significantly. And so if she's doing it at 60, you know that the, everyone else is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think the model's going to change very rapidly. It, it's going to be a complete redesign. And yeah. I don't know, you know, when Ballmer did the pre-CES keynote, and he showed Xbox Connects the Avatar. That's right. The first thing, I have a 12 year old, and the first thing that popped into my head is, my 12 year old is never, she's not gonna know what a phone is. Right. She's gonna be, <laughs> she's gonna be video conferencing remotely with her avatar. She's not gonna even know how to have an interpersonal relationship face to face anymore. Yep. Um, reading everything is gonna be like that. You'll be able to actually probably get inside a magazine. Your avatar can probably walk through a National Geographic traveler trip through Milan down the road. You know, it's, right. it's really gonna be. Or they've be used one of these, you know, Google type cameras where they've went through and, and you can just, yeah, you can walk the scene. Yeah, yeah, which will be phenomenal. It is, it's really fun and I think the bookstores. Crazy stuff, it's off the chart, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, they're gonna need to reinvent themselves for digital content sharing. Yep. And they'll become hubs, almost like the coffee shops of today yeah. will, will become. And maybe we'll be building our own magazines as groups. Absolutely. And doing travel. I'm sure that's already happening. But uh, I can't, yeah. ima I can't yeah. imagine that that not being a component there. Yeah. Yeah, we, s we see user-generated content, user-generated magazines. Of yep. uh, it's really things like Flipboard is, uh, are doing or are really kind of just starting everybody on thinking about I it. I had to laugh because we had a gentleman in here yesterday afternoon. They launched a new application, and he was basically talking about he taken it, tied it in. It was just basically where you, how you can connect with your friends, and you can show them. Okay, this is where I'm going at this store. Check this store out. Yeah. And he had something circled. And I said, Oh, I know that restaurant at the Paris uh, the casino. Right. And I said that they've got the best filet, filet mignon in the whole country in that place. And he and I laughed because we both had ate there before and had that same dish. So you know, just because he had circled a picture on something, yeah. we all had you know in. in we would have never had that topic otherwise. Right, you know, right. yeah, so. yeah. It, it, <laughs> it opens everything, it changes everything. It, it absolutely really does. does, it really does. So, you know, I've, uh, be honest with you, I was not familiar with Zinio before today. Well, anybody and that's listening to this can try it out for free, including you. Yeah, you, you absolutely. You go to Zinio and register for an account, you get to choose a magazine for free, so. I, I've got their website up on the uh, on the screen there, Jack. So, <laughs> it's Z-I-N-I-O dot com yep. is the website. And it's a free free app for the just, iPad and the just iPhone. Just go to the App Store and, and grab it and pull it down, and, and I'll definitely be doing that. And, I, you know, what's dangerous about this? <laughs> <laughs> no, we see that on Twitter. What's dangerous yeah. is you're going to end up spending a lot yeah, of money lot when you start money. seeing all those magazines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, magazines that I have not gotten print for years that I might be saying, well, maybe it's worth a try to go back and do the digital. And, yeah. it, and that's actually... Not a bad thing because no. we're going to be supporting the industry and, and keeping exactly. those companies alive. Well, you know, you can only carry so many of these things around. I look at uh, things like the Kindle. My wife is an avid reader, and she has like 130 books with her. And she can carry it in a little Kindle, and you can do the same thing with uh, this and uh, your iPad now. You can carry all sorts of magazines with you and not have to worry about yeah. all the extra weight. And yeah. That works out great. So in the house, I share my magazines. They're in the bathroom. They're in the living room. Can I share this with my wife's? Absolutely. On her iPad? Absolutely. Is it a single login for, is that how that works? Or you how can, does it I mean, you, the, creating an account is free. Right. So you can create an account for your family or yep. you can each create an account, run them off the same computers. You just log in with your information okay. if you want to partition your libraries. Okay. It's totally, it's totally up to you. So, they're not so it depends what you're buying. <laughs> I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. So that's, that's the good news then on that. It's like the Kindle. We can share amongst family yes. members. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for spending some time with us this thank morning, Jeannie. And everyone, make sure they check out Zinio. Um, and uh, this is cool. Anybody, anybody have any questions in the chat room? I was going to look and see if, they, if there's any questions. I and didn't see any Zinio questions. No, I guess right. we're good. 
Excellent. Hey, thank you so much. Thanks so much. Uh, yep, take care.